Hello and welcome, my name is Piotr Kufrzak and this is the tutorial on how to fix that pesky WordPress error that you get on your RSS feed that says something along the lines of error on line 2 at column 6, XML declaration allowed only at the start of the document. Well, what the heck does that mean? How do we fix it? And, well, how do we fix it again if it does, the first fix doesn't work? So, let's get started. The reason this happens is that there's honestly some weird error and some characters being put in front of the RSS feed. Where do these characters come from? Well, that's a really good question. Nobody really knows. It could be a plugin, it could be some content, or it could just be WordPress being weird. WordPress being this big complicated piece of software that it is, it does mess up sometimes. But the first solution we're going to try is usually one of the easiest, and for most people, it works. If you go to my website, piotrkrzak.com, and you search for the XML issue, you'll be able to see the text version of this podcast. Uh, you can also go to cklph.com slash wprssfix. Again, that's cklph.com slash wprssfix. And if you click on that, and go to that link, it'll take you straight to the website. Well, getting started, you'll get an error like this. Some people for this is on line three, sometimes it's line six, sometimes it's line one, but it's something along these lines. If you're getting this, first make sure that your RSS is actually not validating using the rather useful tools like the W3C RSS validator. You'll get something probably like this. Well, don't panic. It's, there are some potential solutions, and for many, one of these potential solutions work. If they don't, you always have the nuclear option, which I'll get to at the end. This first solution includes downloading a piece of code and installing it on your server. This can get a little bit technical, and this is why this video exists, because some people just... My text sometimes tends to be a little bit complicated to follow, and having a visual guide is better. So. Here we go. The first thing you need to do is download this file. You can get it from this link or on my website. You can download say, pretty much the same version unless this original guy updated. I'm not the author of this original fix. I've put it here into text format so it's easy to understand, giving you step-by-step -step instructions, but I didn't write this fix. You can download it from this guy. Um, if you click on it, it'll download and you can open it with whatever your favorite tool is. And it looks something along like this. Don't worry, this is all just a bunch of code. And we're going to be putting this on our server. It's pretty safe, and you can also download, download it from my server. Um, either one is fine. And after you download it, put it on your computer. And that's fine. Whether it's your download directory or desktop, it's all good, as long as you have quick access to it. Next thing you're going to need to do is open up your FTP server. On my Mac, I use something called Transmit. And here I already have it open, my web server. So. What you need to do is you need to take this file that you just downloaded. And you're going to need to put it on the WordPress root folder. That's what this step is. Now, what that means is you're not going to put it in the FTP root or the main directory. You're going to put it where the WordPress installation is installed on. So uh, let me explain to you that uh, a little bit visually. I think that'll help a lot of you guys. If you log into FTP, if you have a lot of stuff like I do in your own server, you'll get weird, weird, lots of things like this. What you're going to want to do is go into the public HTML folder, if you have one of those, and then find your installation folder. In my case, I have lots and lots and lots of domains. This is just one of my accounts. So I need to find my domain folder, which is, in my case, the piotrkrzak.com folder, which is this one. And this is where we would install it. For some of you who only have one domain, this could be in the public HTML folder. For others, like some of my clients, they don't even have a public HTML folder. It could be www.doc, or it could be public documents. There's a lot of different names, but as long as it's that folder, you can even ask your web host which folder this is, and where it's installed, and just place it exactly where your WordPress files are installed. Now, which WordPress files? If you see something like WP Atom, WP Blog Header, Comments-Post.php, Config, Cron, Feed, Links, Load. If you see stuff like this, 
all of these files, then you know you're in the right place. You also see WP admin content and includes. If this is what you see, this is where you're going to have to install it. Now, as you can see, I already have this folder, or this file installed here because I had this issue. So all you're going to have to simply do is click and drag and download it or upload it, I guess, into your server. And that's it. Simply, really, that's as simple as this solution gets. But you do have to do one more little edit to make sure that this file is actually used. What you're going to have to do is edit your index.php file. This is where a little bit gets a little bit technical and include this line. This line, which has include the file which is downloaded, means include the file which is downloaded. Pretty self explanatory. To edit that, what we have to simply do, we have to find our index.php file in this folder. So in my case, it's going to be up. Oops. It's going to be right over here. There we go. Index.php. And we can we're edit it here. You can edit in whatever your favorite editor is. If you have Cyberduck and Mac or using Transmit or using what else is there? In Windows, there's Qt FTP. However way you want to edit this file, this index.php file, you're going to want to copy and paste this line of code. Just copy. And you're going to want to put it at the end of the index.php file so it looks something like this. You want to put it before the this line that says define use WordPress themes and, uh, and before require blog header. So you want to put in that. So that would be right about here, let's say, or we can even stick it right in front. So we copy and paste, and then we would save. And that's it. I'm not going to save because I don't need to use this, this plugin anymore. And that's it. That's all you're going to have to do. That's simple. Now for some people, I just read through a lot of these comments because there's a lot. Some people say, hey, it didn't work. Some people say, hey, it actually worked. Some people try to figure out for a while. I apologize that it does get weird sometimes. Uh, the one may possible issue you can run up to in here is if you copied and pasted this and you stuck it into your index file. Let me open that up again for you. If you have that in here and you copied and pasted it in here and you saved it, maybe the double quotes didn't work. You know, these guys. You might have to change that to single quotes. That helps some people. As you can see, these guys use single quotes here. So that might work for you. For me, the double quotes worked just fine. Other people just say nothing really worked. Some people had to use some different stuff. Some people had to use a complete address or file path. Um, that gets a little bit more technical. Usually you don't have to do that. But usually this one, uh, it works for some people. It doesn't work. Now, if it doesn't work for you, don't panic. Here's some things that you can try. One of the first things is just like Sophie says here, you can simply go back to your WordPress settings, go to your settings and go to permalinks. Oop, that would be over here. Yeah, settings permalinks. In your permalinks, you might have to click save changes a few times, maybe change this around a few times and then click keep saving save until it starts working. You might have to do that. For some people that has actually amazingly worked. Why? I don't know. WordPress is so weird. Sometimes it does weird things like this. So if that also doesn't work for you, the next step, it gets a bit more hectic, less technical, but more hectic. Next step, some people don't like because it involves disabling all your plugins. Why? Because sometimes a plugin has some piece of code that just does not sit well with WordPress. It just doesn't like it. So what I recommend is going with the semi nuclear option of clicking this button. So it clicks every single plugin you have and you deactivate every single plugin that you are using. If after refreshing your browser cache and refreshing the website a few times to make sure that none of the plugins are actually being used, basically clearing everything else, you know, starting from scratch. 
making sure that all from there. Then see if the RSS issue appears again. If it does not, then you know it was one of those plugins causing that issue. So then re-enable the plugins one by one. So enable one, refresh the page, clear the cache, or clear the cache first, really. Then refresh the page, see if the RSS issue is still there. If it's not, great, go to the next one until you finally get down to activate one, refresh cache, check the web page, and if it then that one plugin is causing the issue, then you know that one specific plugin is causing the issue for whatever reason. Something's just not playing right. What has happened before with previous clients, actually, is two plugins, for whatever reason, just didn't communicate well. They just did not play well. You know, you got to put them in separate rooms, just like you do with kids. For some reason, they just don't play well. Don't know why. But that happens. Uh, so maybe there's an update to a plugin. Maybe that'll help. Or you just kind of have to use a different plugin that, the, that has some similar features. It happens. So those are your options right there with that one. But if that still doesn't solve anything for you, there are two sort of extreme options for you right there. They're extreme because both of them are a pain in the butt. The first solution is going through every single one of your posts and pages and seeing if you have any strange characters. Now, I don't mean strange characters like the shady guy walking outside the street in a, in a trench coat. I mean strange characters as in text. If it looks a little bit funky, maybe for some reason you typed in, instead of using a U, use an umlau. So no. Sometimes it has happened. I've seen it and I've had to fix it, which was not pretty trying to find this issue. We created a brand new article, we posted it up, and the whole site broke. Why? We didn't know. We the only thing that changed for us was that one post. So what we did, we got rid of that post and the site worked again. So we had some weird character in there. We finally found it. It ended up being an extra space in the beginning with some weird block character. It was weird. So anyway, we got rid of that and, and it worked. It could be somehow it didn't save right or there's some strange character in, in your text. So you're going to have to go through every single one of your posts, starting from the latest one and then going to the older ones and seeing what's changed lately. You know, maybe there's a comment that screwed things up. Maybe there's a post, an article, a page. Don't know. You're going to have to go through all of those. Like I said, it's it's not a pretty solution, but it is one of the possible reasons why you're having this problem. Now, the last option is the least favorable option. It's the nuclear option. What this means is you wipe out everything. You go to your web host, you uninstall WordPress, of course, before you, know, you back it all up, and you'd nuke it. You'd completely uninstall everything. And then you reinstall WordPress one piece by piece, plugin by plugin, piece of text by piece of text, and really hope that nothing breaks while going forward. That has pretty much almost always solved the issue. But again, if you have a really, really big website, kind of like I do, uh, it would be a pain in the button then some and probably not worth it to go in the nuclear option as it would be the longest solution. If you back everything up and you're pretty sure it's not the content, then it's not going to be as bad. It's, you're still going to have to recreate some things, but it is still one of the possible solutions. So those are your options. You can try using this file to fix it after you install it and edit your PHP file. You can try to clear your cache and read the permalinks. You can try to un uninstall and disable all your plugins. And if that also doesn't work, try the nuclear option. Those are basically all your options and checking content. Um, other than that, if the nuclear option doesn't even work, then I don't know, honestly. <laughs> if you've checked your content, you did a nuclear option and it's still doing that, it's possibly a server, or maybe there is something in the content that you missed. That would be the only reason if it's still going on, if you did a fresh install. But try this option first. See how it works for you. So you remember, download this file, upload it to your server, wherever your WordPress files are, which would be the file where you see the WP content, includes, admin, and all these files, that's where you upload it to and edit that PHP file, the index.php file to have this in it. If that doesn't fix it, try the plugin solution. If that doesn't work, try editing content. If that doesn't work, good luck with the nuclear option. With that, that's Peter Krzyzek signing off. Good luck.